Hello and welcome to WebDM. My name is Jonathan Pruitt. To my right, as always, my DM, Jim Davis. Today we're going to be talking about 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. We're talking classes. Druids and fighters. Monks, rangers, and rogues. Now let's kick down the door and talk some D&D. Now, in 3rd edition, the druid was like... Godzilla. You, you just couldn't stop a druid. You couldn't stop a druid. Then they nerfed him a little bit in 3.5. Yeah, a, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So, 5th edition, the Druid. No animal companion, right off the bat. Yeah. And that stings, right? Yeah. It's kind of like... It stings. It hurts, you know. What's up with that? Yeah, but i with nature, but you can't have an animal companion. There's, like, the spell, Yeah. But it's not the same. It's not like the ranger. And that's... Yeah. At the same time, as a character concept, they're one of my favorites. You're still a druid. You're still turning into other animals. You are still casting a lot of nature-themed spells, a lot of which are really good spells. And so the core of what the druid was is still there. And in my mind, looking at the 5th edition druid and looking at how it plays and just kind of how the game is, it's reminding me more of the 2nd edition druid mm -hmm. than the 3rd. Yeah. Whereas 3rd edition druid was just like, give me the monster man, I'm going to turn it into one of those monsters right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, give me, give me this thing. I'm going to be this. And my guy's going to be it. And I'm going to be awesome. And I don't need the rest of the party. Yeah. Whereas like druids, it was hard to get druids to play well with others. Now, Druids play well with others because they're not outshining the wizards, the fighters, the thieves, the, you know what I mean? They've toned it down a bit, but they've kept the heart of what the druid is, which is a nature caster focused around connection with the land or with animals. For people that like that kind of stuff, it's still there. Yeah. It's just, you gotta lower your expectations from what third edition did, which is probably a good thing. Overall though, that's what fifth edition has kind of done. It's kind of toned it down it's, a bit. It's taken that hyperbole and right. turned it into a normal arc yeah, of, particularly for of the, character advancement. Yeah, particularly for the casters. I'm, I'm anxious to see how higher level fifth edition plays out, how they balance casters and non-casters. But so far, it seems like they've, they've got a good balance going. Now we're around to my neck of the woods, the, yep. uh, the fighter. What do you like about it? What do you like about, I mean, the fact that they kept over maneuvers from uh, Book of Nine Swords? Mm -hmm. To me, Book of Nine Swords changed to third edition, and I almost consider it core. I almost consider it, this is part of the regular game. Yeah. So the fact that there's something for people, that, for people like me that really liked the maneuvers, part of what drove me away from the fighter and so many other editions is eventually I get tired of, I rolled a hit, and I'm done. And I roll for damage. I roll for damage, mm -hmm. and I'm done. Playing the Battlemaster fighter gives you those options. It gives you the ability to, to manipulate the game, to have resources that you can use, try different things out. The other archetypes for fighter, you know, it looks like the champion just makes you a better fighter. Yeah, it's just, you, yeah. you'll be a badass. Yeah. But you, you're still going to be like, I rolled a hit, and here's my damage. I rolled yeah. a hit, here's my damage. So, and I'm, I'm really glad that they've, that they've done the fighter this way, and all of the, the fighting classes in 5th edition, in which one of the things that I really liked about 4th was that they looked at the game from a game perspective, and they said, playing a fighting class should be as interesting as playing a casting class. Mm -hmm. Where in other editions of D&D, the casters are over there. They're pouring over their books. They're looking at things. They're checking stuff. They're finding all these different ways that they can manipulate the game and the game world. And the fighter is just roll the dice, roll the damage. There you go. Mm -hmm. And I like that they've tried to keep some of that so that it's as interesting to play in terms of just equality of, of interesting things to do at the table. It seems maybe not equal, but certainly getting there. The monk. So the monk. But tell me about the monk. I love monks. I love them a lot. I've yeah. taken martial arts. I'm a black belt. It's my thing. It's your thing. I consider myself a second level monk. Yeah. Um, that's up to point of debate over sure. the years. I don't see why not. But that's fine. I love that you can be a ninja mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With, in 5th edition. You can just be an awesome monk. You can be Bruce Lee. Yeah. Or you can be a ninja. Or you could be the avatar. Absolutely. Which, the way of the four elements, I'm sorry. There's a lot there that's like... I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't mind being a firebender. Yeah. Sure. And that's how you get me into it. Like, for me, I always saw the monk as this kind of odd man out, like, oh, well, the game was written in the 70s, and kung fu was big back then, so monk. But they're just a guy that hits things. Right. The one that summons elements from their being and manipulates them is like, that's the monk I want to play. Yeah. I, I, that's, I want to play a bender. I want to play an elemental mm -hmm. bender. Cover myself in rocks and smash things. I want to okay. shoot fire from my hands, that kind of thing. That's what's exciting about yeah. it. Yeah. No you doubt. still get the old favorites. You know, you get your slow fall. You know, yeah. you get your mind and body protection, you know. But that's a good point about all of the classes in 5th is that there is a way to create 
the character from earlier editions of D&D that fits in that classic mold. That's the open-handed monk. That's yep. the monk that people from first and second edition are going to be familiar with. Then there's the other two, which are like, well, you can just play a different kind of guy that hits things with his fist. You wrestle a dragon into submission. Why not? Why not? As much as they get the ranger, though... Uh, the ranger. The ranger. I think that the ranger, much like the druid... I mean, yeah, you can be a hunter, or you can... What's the other one? Beastmaster. It's not like it was in in in, uh, in fourth edition. And a lot of ways, you could say the same about the rogue, where yeah. the rogue and the ranger in, fifth, in fourth edition reached their height in terms of just their raw yeah. damage output power. To me, the ranger's a real heartbreak, because the ranger archetype, that Aragorn, and they're always scruffy, and they've got the cloak. It's like, that's a ranger, yeah. right? That's an adventurer. Right. They live their life outside, overcoming all these hardships to do whatever it is that they're doing. But then I play one, and I'm like, meh. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that the way rangers are set up now, the way streamlined skills work, with the way the proficiency works, they get the animal companion, so if you want an animal buddy, there you go. I would just say that it's going to be a different type of game uh, for people playing rangers now. You have to spend your actions to let your animal attack. And so I'm curious about how they'll play. Yeah. And I think that, like everything else with 5th with edition, I think they've, they've got the tone right. And they're, they're on the right track. And so my reservations are more me saying, like, well, I don't know about this yet. But I'm curious about what it is. I mean, I'm optimistic about it. So yeah. I think that hopefully when we see some rangers in action at the game table, that they'll be really fun. You spoke about rogues just yeah, yeah. now. You have your assassin now. You have your arcane trickster. You don't just have to be a thief. You just don't have to go up and open locks anymore. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can do it really well. Yeah. The, the one time I've played a rogue in 5th edition went with a thief and had a blast with it. Your skill's all over the place, you're doing a lot of things as bonus actions, you're doing a lot of things just faster and better. In my mind, the rogue still suffers from the, you need to be careful if you've got a wizard in the group that the wizard just isn't like, why, why do I need to climb over a wall when I can fly over it? Why do I need to sneak when I can be invisible? Yeah. But you can say that about so many different classes that it's hard to say like, oh, well that's the fault of the rogue is that they're not a wizard. It's like, that's not the rogue's fault. It's just, you know, yeah. just is the way it is the skills and the the way that expertise kind of works in there, like the way the proficiencies do. I don't know. It, like the Ranger, I'm excited to see them in play, in action. Yeah. Just reading through them and playing them uh, the one time that I did, they were fun enough for me, and I'm not usually a rogue guy. Yeah, that's so we'll very true. That. Thanks again for watching WebDM. We're going to have new ones every Wednesday. Tell your friends. Come back next week.